Just One More Go by DJ Cowdall. The small ship rocked violently from side to side as yet another meteor struck against its hull. Its pilot, Major Dan Barker, pulled aggressively at the helm, trying to avoid what he knew must surely be instant death at any time. Huge boulders, some as big as cities, filled his craft's view screen. How had he stumbled into this meteor shower so abruptly? Dan's thought a myriad of ambiguity. Even how he had come to be piloting this craft was a mystery. How long had he been travelling in this unknown quadrant of space? He had little idea. It could be hours, possibly days for all he could remember. Dan spun his craft over in a 360 degree roll to avoid a small meteor, about 50 metres across. As he did so, he managed to pull free of the deadly shower. Safety at last. The darkness of space enveloped him, as he travelled ever further, ever faster. As he drifted clear of the gigantic numbing brightness of the system's sun, he took a moment to inspect the interior of his ship, only one door directly behind him, sealed tightly. The cockpit an ominous darkness, with little in the way of instrumentation, the only real light emanating from the front panel, which also offered an enlarged view screen. Various minute buttons enabled control of his speed, laser cannons and torpedoes. A large half semicircle acted as his means of steering, both vertically and horizontally, connected to some unknown propulsion system. Such intricacies remained vague to him. He had never been one to indulge in the technicalities. Dan looked over the screen for signs of other ships with whom to communicate, but it became apparent his craft carried no communication equipment. How am I supposed to talk to anybody? He protested. Something far away in his view screen caught his attention. It was small, but appeared to be the only thing within his immediate proximity. He decided to move closer for a detailed inspection. Dan pushed the most obvious buttons in sequence, and the craft surged ahead. A huge bellowing noise filled his ears as the ship's engines burst into life. The craft vibrated for a few seconds before shooting off like the sleekest dart. Dan fell back into his seat as some distant gravitational force dragged at him. He thought fleetingly that there shouldn't have been such powerful gravity so far from any visible planets, but shrugged it off, deciding it unimportant. The thought was lost as the ship's speed surged again. The ride felt exhilarating. Adrenaline coursed through him and he gasped. The tiny dot that appeared on the screen came up like some heavy object falling from the sky. At once elated at the electrifying sensation of speed, a second later terrified at the vision which presented itself before him on the view screen, the hidden object became increasingly obvious as another spaceship, its sleek exterior bristling with armaments, signifying its malevolent intentions. As he flew closer, the alien craft began to turn and move forward in his direction. Dan scrambled at his controls to slow himself quickly. The effect was immediate, his ship slowed abruptly, as if caught in some giant spider's web. He tugged at the helm to steer away from colliding with his prospective enemy. Barely feet apart, Dan's craft shot past the other. As he passed, bolts of red fire erupted from the alien ship, impacting against his hull repeatedly. Only the shields on Dan's craft saved him from certain death. Dan pulled the craft around confidently, fully intending to return fire. A metallic voice within his cockpit interrupted his concentration. Warning! Shield weakening! The voice boomed. Dan felt an icy stab of fear run through him. Redoubling his determination to give as good as he got, he again poured on the speed, intending to fly faster and better than his opponent. The sheer speed of his ship helped him to outmaneuver the other, obviously catching his enemy unaware. Dan fired both his laser cannons and let out a wide spread of torpedoes from his craft. The enemy ship, which had fired without reason, stood no chance. As miniature shards of death bombarded the craft, igniting into fireballs on contact blowing chunks from the ship's hull. As the dying craft leered over it with the force, both laser cannons struck home mercilessly. In a flash, the whole craft burst into an expanding inferno. The light of the explosion died quickly in the cold vacuum of space, leaving small pieces of debris flying outwards away from the scene. Dan sat incredulous at the sheer firepower of his own weaponry. He hadn't wanted to harm anyone or even to fight, but he had been shocked at being fired upon. Still, too late to worry now, it was over. As Dan tried to gather his thoughts and work out how he had come to be here, other would-be antagonists entered his sector, unknown to him. Dan's expression remained one of guilt and perplexity. He sat motionless, letting his craft drift off into the desolate vastness of space. As he wondered of his surroundings, forces alien moved with deadly intent towards the ship. Not one as before, but many. Five or six seeking retribution for their fallen comrade. 
As alarms began sounding in Dan's cockpit, signifying their appearance, he looked quickly around the screen, counting out his foe, judging the distance and speed of each fast approaching craft. Dan moved across his limited instrumentation in a flurry of activity, looking every bit the seasoned fighter preparing for battle. His ship flew forward, his intention now to fight, to be free. Within a thousand meters of the nearest craft, Dan could make out each ship's markings, black lines from stem to stern, with a single silver torch held by a mighty palm at the front, each ship emblazoned with the deepest red colors. As he swept closer, the nearest ship let free bursts of energy, barely missing his own craft. Dan swung round in a 360 degree roll, flashing past the enemy, only just missing ship to ship contact by the merest sliver. Dan struggled with all his might to bring the helm up as far as possible. Again, the unknown gravitational force ripped at his craft like a ferocious tidal wave. Dan managed to bring his craft round for attack before the enemy had a chance to react. He poured on several bursts of his laser cannons, obliterating the mysterious enemy. Dan shouted, thrilled by his own success. Every sinew in his body shuddered at the tension he felt from the battle. Sweat dripped from his forehead. He wiped at it quickly, allowing himself to see. In an instant, the other pursuers were upon him, fury in their hearts, revenge in their alien minds. Laser cannons bombarded his ship, reawakening the fear within him. Desperately, he tugged at the ship's controls to free himself from the would-be assassins, but to no avail. In every direction, fighters fell upon him. He let free his laser cannons in wild arcs, torpedoes ejected from his ship in random patterns. The skies became a myriad of vibrant colors. Five ships surrounded him, looking for his destruction. Dan's irrational firing paid off as two enemy craft were hit by torpedoes, causing them to disintegrate in the brightest flashes imaginable. His laser cannons dance about like fireflies, catching another craft astern, destroying it in an instant. The other two crafts circling appeared to panic, both looking to escape from the madness of his rage, succeeding only in colliding head on into each other. Dan shouted again, ecstatic for his freedom. More gunfire caught his attention, this time way off to the edge of his screen. He swung his craft round to face whatever enemy lay ahead, and sat agape at the spectacle before him. The new aggressor was gigantic, as big as the largest planet, its size engulfing his view screen, even at that distance. Dan cried out as his ship was rocked again and again by a deadly force, as small batteries let loose sparkling blue lasers on him. He returned fire in vain, the huge fortress's shield throwing off his attempts as if in disdain. Gigantic openings in the enemy ship's hull burst into life, offering instant death. Dan screamed, pulling frantically at his helm to escape from the hellish nightmare. The opening spewed forth their deadly destruction as burning white light engulfed Dan's ship. Its hull glowed with the inferno outside. Everything within his cockpit began exploding as alarms sounded and warning lights flashed across his instrument panel. A voice rang out from the ship's computer but Dan struggled to hear it in his last few seconds alive. The alien ship began with insidious intent to drag Dan's craft towards itself. His craft swallowed into the beckoning orifice that shone with the strength of a million suns. He felt everything rock and vibrate violently, as if his ship would break apart any moment. Blinded by the intense light within his cockpit, deafened by alarms within his ship and outside, he was being shaken to his very core. Dan felt he was losing his mind before his life. It was all too much to possibly understand. At last, it was all over. He had fought hard and well, but he was finished. He knew that much now. The shaking stopped and the door behind him burst open. Dan screamed in rabid terror as the blinding white light that enveloped his craft burned through into his cockpit as the door swung wide. Hostile forces grabbed at him, dragging him from his craft. He fell onto the cold, hard floor outside as his pursuers dropped him. Terror written upon his face, Dan struggled to stand up, pulling away from his captors, trying to see, to make something of the madness. The tallest of the enemy, dressed in some alien attire, spoke at last. Come on, mate, you've had your ride, now move on and let someone else have a go. Dan suddenly realised where he was and again he started to shout. No, wait, please, you've got to let me have one more go, just one more go. The two men picked Dan up and began to drag him away. Sorry, Gav. You'll just have to wait your turn, the attendant insisted firmly, as he and his workmate dragged out yet another player from the new Star Wars amusement ride in London's entertainment centre. The ride attendant smiled at Dan and spoke quietly. You people do take your pleasure seriously, don't you? 